Hi guys! Happy Saturday. I don't know what it's like in your neck of the woods, but it is finally drying out a little bit. We've had some much, much needed rain. Uh, we didn't get as much as we'd hoped for, but we did get some. Uh, it's been so dry here. And of course the autumn leaves are starting to fall, much to my husband's disappointment. They are all over the driveway and the car, so he will be out in the next few days raking up those. And because we live in the country and there's a lot of trees out here, there's a lot of leaves. So it's going to be a, be a very busy couple of days in the next little while just cleaning up all of the fall detritus and debris. But winter is coming and before it gets here we have Christmas coming so that's the reason for our Santa Claus today. I love this piece. I love painting this particular technique and I think you're really going to enjoy it. This one sort of finishes off a series that I started a number of years ago. Uh, it's all based on a short little poem from childhood called Starlight, Star Bright. So there are four different Santas in that series and this is the final one and it finishes the poem. So I'm glad to have, finally have that one completed. I've had it sort of sitting on the back burner for quite a while in various stages of completion and I finally got it all done, pattern included. So we're going to uh, play with that today. But before we get started, uh, I do have some winners from last week. Uh, we had a great mug full of goodies to send out and then we had some fun swag to send out as well. And the winners of that were Kay Reynolds, she won the coffee cup full of goodies, and Wayne Engstrom and Deborah Poole. So if you don't mind, send me your shipping information via messenger or by email, whichever works for you, and we will get your goodies out to you as soon as possible. Also had a winner from the midweek video, uh, the funnel sugar skull pouches and, and the tea lights, and that is Carla Lees, L-E-I-S. Uh, Carla, thank you so much for watching. We also hit a milestone this week. The YouTube channel hit 3,000 subscribers. So we did our little happy dance here because we've kind of been working at really developing our YouTube channel and uh, that was a really nice milestone to hit. So we have our 3,000. So if you are not a subscriber to my channel, please hit the subscribe button so that you can see all the new videos that we've got coming up. Some do not go to Facebook. so. That's the way you're going to find out all of the goodies that we have available for you on our YouTube channel. What else, what else, what else? Um, we had all kinds of fun things happen in the studio this week, boxes arriving, but the big thing that wasn't so fun was some major computer issues, <laughs> major. So uh, I missed my color of the day three days this week. Um, I missed my thought for the day three days this week. Uh, I still haven't gotten it up for today. so. Um, apologies for that, but uh, we have been contending with some uh, rather nasty issues with the computer. However, I think we have them all sorted out. So, having caught you all up in the drama in the studio this week, <laughs> let's get started on our Santa. So, this is the surface I chose. It's 11 by 14. This is just a, a wood cradle art panel. I found these two for ten dollars at Michael's. They were not expensive and the finish on them is actually quite nice. I have two really good coats of Prussian blue on this surface and then I sanded lightly in between to get a nice smooth surface. I then transferred my lettering onto the bottom of my panel and I don't know if you can see it but I'm going to use a white graphite pencil here. I very lightly sketched some swirls onto the background, like so. You don't want a heavy line, but just a light swirl like that. And they're going to continue all over this. And we're going to start by dry brushing this wind, let's call it wind, onto our surface. Now I'm going to use my point blender, I'm using the large one, and warm white. So I'm going to pick up just a little on the tip of the brush and then I'm going to rouge it into the brush like so. I want lots of paint in there but I don't want it too wet so I'm almost drying the brush out when I do this. And you're going to start at the center of that swirl 
neatness doesn't really count for this. These swirls are going to be very soft, like so. So, and they're very loose. Don't panic about getting these just so. Just like that. If they touch each other, that's okay. And when you start to run out of paint, you come back. And I'm going to do this over here. This is just, it's actually quite cathartic. You can just relax and put these swirls wherever you want. This is fun. You're going to do it once or twice. You don't want these to be fully opaque. You want them to stay soft. But every time you go over them, they get a little bit brighter. And I try to skip around to the outside so that they stay brighter in the center. But then you get a nice soft look going around. And I'm being informed that I forgot to put on my microphone. <laughs> Fortunately, it wasn't too far away. Can you hear me now? There we go. Easy peasy. Now, this whole swirly thing is just to create some movement in the background. There is quite a bit going to go in here and I don't want this to get so busy, but I want it to have a light feeling. If it stays dark, it's just a little too oppressive and this should have a light feeling to it. So you can see I'm going around the outside of that swirl so it stays brightest in the center and it gets soft and foggy all the way around. Just like that. I've got one more I'm going to do right here. I kind of like how soft this looks. And you can fill in gaps if there's areas that you feel are just a little too full of the, the blue, then just go right ahead and throw in a couple more swirls. There, I think that that's just about where I want it. Some fun swirls. You can putz with this till the cows come home. I just, I like, you know, a little brighter in the center, like that. But keep it simple. This works up quickly, and this is the background. It's going to get pushed to the back. It's not going to be an in-your-face finish, so don't worry about whether or not they're utterly perfect. It really doesn't matter. So, because we dried that, it's, or dry brushed that, it's fairly dry already. So now we're going to add a few snowflakes to our background. I do love me some snowflakes. Now the stencil I'm using is in the M2 section on the website. If you're looking for the snowflake stencil, that's where you will find it. It's a six by six. And I love this. This is one of my favorite snowflake stencils. So I'm going to start here. And with my stencil brush, I'm going to use some warm white. And I'm going to do this one snowflake at a time. So I'm going to, oh, there we go. I'm not looking for fully opaque. I just want to get some color on that snowflake. So neatness doesn't count. Perfection is to be avoided at all costs. So there we have one. I'm going to pull another one down here. I'm not putting a ton of snowflakes on here. I don't want this to get too busy. I want to keep it light. But I also, whew, there we go. And let's put this one. So what I like about these stencils with a variety of different stencil or snowflake shapes on them is that you can putz with it. Oh, 
And I think I'm almost there. I'm going to pull another one down here. Oop, out of paint. There we go. And I think one over here, which snowflake I haven't used yet. Oh, let's do this lacy one. Which one do we want? No, this one here. And again, I'm just being selective about where I place them. I don't want them too tight or too close together because we're going to do some stars in there too. So I've got my star stencil and I'm going to be selective about where I place these as well, but I'm going to use a different stencil brush and I'm using two colors for the stars. I'm going to use a little bit of the golden straw doesn't want to come out of the bottle and the other color I'm working with is tangerine I like this orange it's a very bright orange but it also works really well with yellows so I'm going to pick up a little of that yellow on my stencil brush and again I'm going to blend it in both directions And I'm just going to put a skiff of color on there. And I'm going to choose a couple of the smaller ones like so. And then I'm going to pick up a little bit of that orange on the dirty stencil brush. And one side of that star is going to get a little touch of that orange. Just seems to help brighten that yellow a little bit. And I'm going to move that and I'll do this again this way and again I'm just tucking them here and there I didn't want these two in your face either they're just kind of there I kind of like doing them in clusters of three that works for me and then back with a little of that orange. There we go. And I think probably just a couple more in here somewhere. We're going to keep this simple. Nothing too over the top. The fun part is you can put them wherever you choose. You just kind of have to keep in mind where your Santa is going to be placed. There we go. I'm liking that. I think there's a little spot up here that could use one too. Right here. Oops. Too much orange. And I'll do the middle one. There we go. So I think that does it for our background. I think that works. I think that works. So we're going to leave the lettering until the very end. But now we're going to move on to our Santa. And this guy is so easy to do. So you're going to take your line drawing, and this is what I do in the studio, instead of using graphite paper to trace my Santa onto the scrapbook paper, I will use my photocopier. So I cut a piece of the scrapbook paper to the same size, eight and a half by 11 that fits into the printer. And then I put my line drawing onto the scanner and then print my line drawing directly onto the scrapbook paper. And then tape my scrapbook paper directly onto a board. And when it's taped in, when you're painting on the paper, it doesn't buckle as badly as if it was loose. So the base coats for this are really simple. The mitts and the boots are base coated with lamp black and two coats, make sure they're nice and opaque. The beard, the mustache and the beard are base coated with the slate gray. The face is base coated with cotton candy, which is that soft pink flesh tone. 
And then all of the fur trim on the hat and the mittens and on the robe are all done with light buttermilk. Now the trick to painting on paper with acrylics is quite simply this, don't use any water. Uh, you can get your brush wet, but um, just wet. You don't want to mix your paint with the water. And so you can base coat quite easily without causing too many ripples and buckles in the paper. Usually two coats is sufficient. If you can still see some of the pattern through the paint, that's okay. It just becomes part of it in the end. So and then I have a couple of spots here where I would like to see it a bit more opaque. So there we go. The other nice thing is that if you whoopsie and go over the edge, that's fine because you're going to cut this little guy out. So you're going to fix up all those little baubles towards the end. This is really fun to do. You don't even have to be sitting in your painting, painting room. You can be watching TV and doing this because you don't need to have a ton of water or a ton of supplies because your colors are fairly limited with this. We're literally making the scrapbook paper the most vibrant, most important part of this, and you're just going to enhance that. Now the scrapbook paper, um, they vary in thicknesses and coarseness. Um, it really doesn't matter which one you choose. I've done this with gift wrap, Christmas paper and whatnot. You can still do the same thing. It's all going to be decoupaged onto your surface we're going to use some matte medium for that. So it doesn't really matter what type of paper you put onto it. The only thing I suggest is to look for something that is you know, a little heavier than say tissue paper. Um, you don't want it to be so fragile and this works really well. This one is one that I found at Michael's. Uh, it was in more like the festive papers that you can buy a single sheet at a time. You don't have to buy an entire book. So this paper worked very very well and you can use any pattern you want it wouldn't even necessarily have to be something specifically Christmas it could be sheet music it could be uh, a simple pattern of polka dots black and white or red and white or green and red or whatever whatever pattern suits your fancy it will work just fine so the big one on this we're going to start by adding some embellishment to the uh, fur trim on this robe and I'm going to do that with a quarter inch angled shader and I'm going to put not antique green where'd it go ah plantation pine I'm going to use some plantation pine and a little bit of margarita I like to have that bright green just for a little contrast and we're going to use a C, uh, an S stroke for this. So I'm going to tip load with the margarita on the toe of the brush. I don't know if you can see that clearly. So it'll, the lighter color is on the toe of the brush and the darker color is on the heel of the brush. And we're going to blend it back and forth until the two colors merge like so. Now an S stroke is done by setting the chisel edge on the surface, pull down and to the right and then down and it forms a diamond shape. This is an abbreviated S stroke and you're going to alternate back and forth and I ran out of paint. I'm going to alternate back and forth so that these leaves do this. Essentially what I'm doing is creating a vine, like so. I have to turn it. You can practice this. You can get pretty slick at it after a while but it makes very simple leaves. And you're going to put those leaves on all of the trim. 
even this one that is kind of hidden back here. And on the hat. I like it when the leaves are, are not quite perfect. It makes things more interesting. And they're not all exactly the same color. There we go. So we have these leaves all over. And now I'm going to take my liner. I've got a 10 knot, but I think I want something a little longer. Um, this is a 5 aught script. Yeah, this will do the trick. So I'm going to thin out a little of that plantation pine. Lots of water. There we go. And I'm going to put a vine right here. And I'm going to start by putting a line here like so, coming off of those leaves. And I like to let them sort of wrap around and run into each other like this. And this sort of connects all of those leaves to a vine of sorts. But you also have to take it off the page so that it creates some continuity. So now once they're all connected like that, I like to take a line and just run it through like that. And it instantly softens and gives you that nice tendril, so to speak. And I'm going to do the same thing on this one. And I'm going to connect all these leaves just like that. Turn this around I'm like a truck driver, gonna constantly turn things. So, there is the difficult part of this is connecting these, but I like to have that softer vine in there, it just makes things feel a bit more fluid and less structured. So, there is that. And it does give it a little more softness. So there, I have all my vines done, except for that other sleeve. There we go. And I come over here. Now this one is in behind the beard, so I'm just going to make sure that that gets the treatment it deserves with a nice fine vine. So now we have that in place, all of that vine is done. I want to add some berries to this. We need a pop of white, of red in there. So I'm going to use a little bit of Santa red. And I'm going to use my, the end of my liner brush, dip it in there. And I'm going to add berries in clusters of three and just varying sizes, like so. So one, two, more paint, just like that. I find that the varying sizes, just they look better. You don't want to overdo it. You don't want to have them too close together. funny what that little detail does for things. 
We're going to come back and highlight these berries too, just so that they have a little more oomph. Just like that. So I'm going about every third leaf or so. There we go. And our last little bunch. We'll go there. Ooh, I like that. So once those are dry, I will come back and use the other end of this liner brush and add a small dot of white to some of those berries just to highlight them a little bit. So I'm going to take my dryer. I'm going to take a couple of seconds just to dry this. This little fellow is going to come together quite quickly. I'm going to get into some warm white here. Just find that that little highlight on those berries just makes a difference. And as they say, the devil is in the details. Quiet today. Are they? Questions. <laughs> <laughs> Quiet bunch. Oh, no, they're enjoying it, but it's just no questions for me to read out. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, if you do have questions, gang, by all means, I'm happy to answer them. Maybe they're just busy painting. They could be just busy painting. Yes, they could. <laughs> one of the things about painting is after a while you get zoned out and you're paying attention to what you're doing and, and not to what's going on around you and that's not necessarily a bad thing. <laughs> okay so we have berries done, we have leaves done. We're going to start adding some of the detail to this robe and of course you know what color I'm going to dig out for that one. If you know me at all you know there's a bottle of asphaltum on this painting table. So. I've got a half inch angled shader and some asphaltum. And we're going to start adding some shadows. And this is the fun part about this is because we're not having base coat. We're just having to develop some shape. You're too busy watching. <laughs> watching in awe. Okay. So I'm going to run a shadow along the edge of that fur trim with the darkest value towards the fur. Turn this around. Just like that. It doesn't even have to really be a neat float. It's just enough to give a little shadow in there. Oh, we like got so. questions. Are all four Santa patterns on your website? Yes, they are. All four of them. Um, I am going to, uh, once we're done here today, I'm going to go put them up as a kit so that they'll have a, a special price for all four so we'll get that up today we're kind of running behind schedule because of all the computer issues this week so um, I'm sorry that we're a little slow getting things done but please bear with us we will get it done so I'm putting a shadow underneath the arm along the back and along the fur trim but I'm leaving this open area on the robe unshaded we're going to put a dry brush, a very light dry brush in there at some point. So it'll soften that up. And there's a shadow on the back side of this arm, like so. Oh, Joyce Anderson. Love the paper. Did you buy it recently? This, actually, I got this, this particular paper, I got at a Hobby Lobby. And I believe it was in their, their Christmas section where they keep all of the, um, the festive scrapbook papers. They have books and, and packets and whatnot. And I think that's where I got this one. The one on the original piece, I actually got at Michael's. And it was just a single buy one sheet at a time 
paper. You didn't have to buy an entire book. Um, does the pom-pom on the hat get base coated with light buttermilk? Yes, it does. And you can see that he's coming together quite quickly. And of course, Karen Jones says, hi. Hi, honey. Karen, I forgot to wish you a happy birthday the other day. I'm so sorry. Love you bunches. I hope you had a great day. Oh, what type of printer do you use? Inkjet or laser? I use a laser. I have three lasers in the studio. I have one color and two black and white. One I use strictly as a photocopier. Um, one is for general purpose and the other one is for printing um, patterns and, and color worksheets and things like that. The, the one that I use for printing line drawings is uh, a Canon image class. It was a reasonably priced laser printer. It prints just in black and white. Um, and the, even the toners are not all that expensive and it prints about 5,000 copies on one toner cartridge. So yes, it's, it was a good value. I find the inkjet printers don't work very well for this type of thing because water and ink don't get along. But um, a good old fashioned laser copier or photocopier work wonders. So I have all my shading in place on this hat. So I think it's time we got to some fun, really fun stuff and let's work on that beard. So I have him base coated with slate gray. I've got one coat on and you can tell that I've left a small gap so that you can see where the mustache is on this guy. So I am going to use this one is a rake or a comb brush. Depending on the manufacturer, they're called different things. But this one is a rake, it's a 3 8 And it has these really fine bristles. And to load that, this is how you do it. Get that brush wet and pick up some paint. And then you do a really nasty thing to it. You're going to lay it on its side and press down firmly on the ferrule and open that brush up just like that. So it it looks terrible. It seems like a horrible thing to do to a brush. But what it does is it opens up all of those hairs. And then starting under his mustache, I'm going to stroke in some fine hair like so. And then reload. And I follow the shape. I know I sound like a broken record, but I follow the shape of the beard, like following the shape of the petals, like following the shape of the leaf. And then you're just going to tuck those fine hairs in. And then repeat. So this takes layers like that. And I'm constantly following the shape of that beard. So if it has a little flip in the curl in it, then you follow that shape. Just like that. Now there's some tight little areas that obviously that 3 8 is not going to fit into, but you can take care of that with a liner brush. which I like to do. I like taking my liner and adding some bright things to it. I need to switch because this one I'm finding a little too soft. And I don't know where my other one is. There it is. I have a black silver 3 8 as well. I'm finding the black gold was a little too soft. And this one didn't have any water in it because, you know, I'm not paying attention. There we go. Look at that. That's better. Now I've got something. Frustrating when you can't get a brush to work. And it was just me. <laughs> 
And I do the same thing with the mustache. I start at the outside and I come back like that. Will the Santa kit include the paper? Uh, it, it isn't technically a kit, it's just four patterns. But no, it won't include the paper. <laughs> I'd need a lot of paper. It's just one sheet, right? It's one sheet. Love this little guy. Thanks for sharing. That is Debbie James. Hi, Debbie! So, I've stroked in this beard. And you can putz with it for quite a while. I'm going to switch over to my uh, script liner that I was using. And I want to add a few little bright things here and there because I like that pattern. So I'm just going to stroke a few in like that. These are fun. I like doing these. I have a, an ornament project that uses similar technique that we're going to be doing on the midweek next week. Um, how to do an articulated Santa using a similar technique and by articulated I mean that his arms move he's so cool and he's so pretty and he's finished on both sides so um, join me on my midweek video on YouTube for that one so let's do a little bit on his mustache then we're going to shade him just like that all I'm doing really is just adding some brighter highlights and texture to this. I'm not really worried about going off of this because, again, we're going to cut him out. So his mustache and his beard look pretty good. I'm going to grab, this is Payne's Gray. This is what we're going to shade his beard with. I don't need a lot of Payne's Gray, so I'm going to go back to my um, quarter inch angle and I'm going to pick up a little bit of Payne's Gray. Oops. Had a little bit of green left in that brush. So, yeah, there we go. Cooking with gas now. And I'm going to shade on down the center of that mustache right there and under it and then underneath his mustache with the Payne's Gray. I'm going to let that walk out quite a bit. Like so. I do like Payne's Gray for shading white. And I'm going to shade with the Payne's Gray above the shoulder and down here and around that cuff like so just so that we have a nice shadow underneath his beard and then I'm going to take a small amount of asphaltum and it's going to be a float in the very same place but it, this is going to soften that shadow a little so it doesn't look so cold like so and along there, like so. Just to keep that gray from getting a little too harsh. Now, you're probably thinking that that, um, that gray shadow looks a little harsh under there. So I'm going to take my, this is my 10 knot liner, it's a very fine liner. And this is where I add a few little strays on that mustache. This is what softens all of that, is giving those little stray hairs that come out and overlap on that, over that shadow. Now it makes his mustache and his beard look a little fluffier. Apparently I'm cute. You are cute. 
lucky for you. <laughs> <laughs> you can rent him for a day, you know. <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> so just a few little short strokes of the white so that they overlap that shadow a little bit and it softens out his beard quite nicely. My beard's fine. <laughs> so there we go. We've got a beard done. So now we have to do his face. And I, yes, he needs rosy cheeks. So I'm going to shade his face along the top part of the mustache right here in the corner of his eye and down the side of his nose and under the hat with a float of thinned asphaltum. Just like that. And we want that shadow by the eye in particular. Then a little dot of warm white. His eye is just stroked in with a little lamp black, but he needs a little highlight on his eye. And this is where my small point blender comes in. I'm going to take a little of that Santa red, just a very small amount, and I'm going to rouge that out on my palette till the brush is almost dry. And then I'm just going to add a little blush of color to his cheek right there, just under that eye. And you can add a little touch to his nose as well. So now I think our dip dots are all well and truly dry. So now I take my angled shader and some asphaltum. I've got a fair amount of water in this brush. I'm gonna take my sponge. And I'm going to start shading his, the fur on his robe. And I love that I can go right over the edges of this without worry because I'm going to cut it off. And I'm going to put a float Along the bottom, I'm going to let it run out just about the top of his boot right here. And I'm going to come underneath that beard and all along this side here. The nice float of Eschvaltum. So all of the fur is going to get shaded with that asphaltum just to keep it soft. And this is what gives his hat some dimension gives his little age to this fellow. Shade along the back side of that pom-pom on his hat. I'm going to leave the front portion above the face and the front here and at the edge of the, the mitts. They're going to stay that light buttermilk. I'm just putting a shadow towards the back side of it. And you can deepen it if you want to. If you don't feel it's strong enough, you can deepen it. Now he's going to look a little bit sloppy for a little bit until we get him cut out. And as soon as we cut him out, he's going to look amazing. And we're just about there. So now Again, we're going to come back to that dry brush, that point blender, and a little bit of warm white. What's the sponge for? The sponge. <laughs> this is a trick of mine. Um, after years and years of teaching, this is a trick I use for floating. One of the hardest things for a, a new painter to get is that 
balance of water in your brush. And I've always found that paper towel took too much moisture out of the brush and it was really hard to get that, that nice balance. So I get my brush wet and then I touch it to the wet sponge and it draws off enough moisture, but not too much. And if it hasn't quite taken off enough, I can come back and touch the sponge until I get just the right amount of water in my brush for floating. It has worked and served me very, very well over the years. So I'm going to take my medium point blender and I'm going to rouge that on my palette until it's almost dry. And this is where I add the highlight to the toe of the boot. Oops, a little too much. Let's rouge it some more. It wasn't quite dry. There we go. So I'm going to add that little highlight to the toe of the brush, or the boot, sorry. And I'm going to do the same thing to this mitten, like so. I love these point blenders. They're so easy to control. So there we have a highlight there. And I'll do the same thing on this mitten over here. Now this mitten is going to be holding the pot with the Christmas tree in it. So I put the highlight on, but we're going to cut in a lot of it will be hidden, but still should have that highlight there. And I'll do the same thing to the thumb right there. So now that I've got that in place, I'm going to take my point blender and now is where I'm going to add a few highlights in some other places. And one of them is along the front of that fur, like so. So if you have any wonky floats, this is going to soften those out and make them less noticeable. And we'll do that here and on the front of the hat. So is the sponge wet or dry to start? The sponge is wet. I get it very wet and then I squeeze it out, just wring it out so it is just damp. How long have you been painting? I have been painting since 1975. <laughs> I, was, um, I was 12 years old and my parents um, paid for me to go take private art lessons and painting lessons and um, I first time I picked up a brush I knew that that was exactly what I needed to be doing. I loved it. So I'm just putting a dry brush. Remember what I said about the inside of that coat? I'm just putting a light dry brush of white in there and along the front of the sleeve right here and a little bit on the hat as well. I like that sort of frosted look at the top of the hat. Now every once in a while you notice some of these dark lines don't um, don't want to go away, so I will take, oops, didn't quite rinse my brush enough there, sorry. <laughs> no bling? No bling? You can bling this guy out as much as you want. Um, had you been in the studio the other day, uh, we had a, a discussion about glitter. <laughs> <laughs> because I wanted to put some glitter on a tea light and you know, almost everything in the studio ended up with glitter on it. So it, glitter is one of those things and you know it's it's worse than COVID. It gets everywhere. So yes, if you wanted to add glitter to this, I mean you certainly could. I think he'd be very cute with some glitter, personally. But apparently my opinion is not shared by everybody that works down here. So I just took a little bit, a little float of white. I wanted to clean up a couple of edges here that were just not quite as clean as I wanted them. So I just took a little float of warm white just to soften them up a little bit. There we go. Okay. 
So I think... Melina uh, is a newlywed and needed a hobby. Oh! So she's here. Yay! Welcome, Melina. You can come and play in my sandbox anytime you like. So we have this little Santa is complete. So I'm going to try and take this paper off this board. So now I used painter's tape to put this down. Uh, there's a variety you can use uh, low tack tape or what have you. I just used some painter's tape. So, but I wanted to take a couple of seconds and show you just what a difference it makes when he is cut out. Because right now he looks a little rough. But he's not going to look rough forever. So, and then once I have him cut out, we're going to talk about the Christmas tree. Because there's a fun little technique in doing, painting that tree so that it's not as um, intimidating as it looks. Okay, so I've got that off. Give me two seconds to tidy up my mess here. There we go. I'll lay that down. We'll come back to the tree in just a second. So I have a pair of decoupage scissors. I'm a firm believer you need to have a couple of really good pairs of scissors in your studio. These are decoupage scissors. They are extremely sharp and they come to a very sharp point. And they're ideal for cutting into tiny little details. So to cut this guy out, you cut right to the edge. Don't try to cut around it, cut right to the edge. And I recommend scissors over a uh, X-Acto knife or something like that because I, I firmly believe you cannot be that accurate with it. So the minute you start cutting this out, it starts to clean up all of those little whoopsies and those rough looking areas. This is a very forgiving technique. It is fun to do. You can make all sorts of fun things with it add elements to a variety of things by using this type of technique. You could do this on fabric as well. I know I'm dating myself a little in the 19, early 1980s. It was very popular to use fabric for the background. It's the same idea. We're just using paper instead. And with so many scrap of papers out there, you can customize things a hundred different ways. And not only that, there's so many different types of decorative papers, uh, from rice paper to gift wrap to Christmas cards. I mean, you can use almost anything for this. I love how this looks. So those decoupage scissors cut this very cleanly. And because they're very, very sharp, you can get into tight little spots. And you can get rid of big chunks of paper easily. And this fellow will be so clean and so pretty when we're done. Particularly on this side, because this is where all that shading kind of went off the, the edge of the line drawing. But now I can clean all of that up. So I just continue to cut this out so that I have a nice clean edge all the way around. And I have clean details. And you can continue to putz with this and work on it and add penciled in details or take your, um, your Uniball Signo. I love doing little sketchy bits on things like this. So he was looking a little bit sketchy there for a bit, but cutting him out makes all the difference. I'll just get that last little bit out of there. And we got that little bit above his nose. This is just a fun technique. You could get the kids to do this. These would be so cute, painted on a variety of papers and then make it into a little 
um, a banner or something or de paper decorations to add to your Christmas tree. They're just, it's such an easy way to do it. So there he is. Look how much better he looks when he's all cut out. <laughs> so he is ready to go. Um, you can, I'm going to probably grab my uniball and, and add a few little sketchy lines and some details to him because I like how that looks. But I will do that after he is mounted onto our surface. So that leaves us with just the tree, which is going to go in his hand. And we're going to paint this one upside down. And this technique is, is done with a chin, chisel blending method. I'm going to find my five eighths. There it is, my three eighths. So you need a good, yeah, you need a good angled shader. You can do this with a flat shader too. If you're more comfortable with a flat, then by all means. But you need something with a nice sharp chisel edge. And we're going to come back. Now the base color for this is antique green. And I've only put one coat in so that you can see all of the line, line drawing through it. So we're going to work with antique green. Of course I have a new bottle, I can't get it out. There it is. We're going to start with antique green. And this is a full load. You're going to pick up antique green on the whole brush and work it into the brush. And then you're going to pick up a small amount of that um, margarita and you're going to blend that in. And this is how you're going to do it. You're going to stand the brush right on the chisel edge and then you're going to tap and pull like so. Just follow that line drawing and it's a short abbreviated stroke of tap and pull. And make sure that they all line up together. Just like this. Hello from Spain. <laughs> is that Anna? That is Anna. <laughs> Hi Anna, I hope everything's well in Spain. So it's a tap and pull, but you're not going to come up to the next line. You're going to leave a space on there so that when you do the next row, Now I'm going back over this because I didn't quite have enough paint in my brush at the time. But now you can see where I've got that bright green across the bottom. And I'm going to come up to the next row and it will automatically, as you can see, give you that layer. So tap and pull. Tap and pull. It is a very short abbreviated stroke. We're not working hard. And then you do the next row the same way so that those two lines overlap. So it automatically builds those layers that we are looking for to create those bows. And you can go over this as much as you want till you get the look you want. I rather like it when it's quite soft. And again, don't forget, we're cutting this out. So don't worry if you've got lines showing. And you can always come back and brighten things up. So we're gonna do that here. And again, it's a simple layering technique, works very, very well. Oh, here's a great question. I don't know if you're going to show how to actually take your paws and in this case you don't, in case you don't, normally you dip your paper in water before you bake your paws. Will you do that with a painted piece as yes, well? Yes, I will. 
<laughs> so then that star gets a little shadow Somebody getting ahead of you. on one side, like so. So we've got our little shadow on our star. Now for the pot, um, I just simply put two stripes of warm white across the pot, but I'm going to shade it with a float of Ishvaltum. And I'm coming up underneath that bow with the Ishvaltum like so. And that's going to define our pot quite nicely. And I'm coming down one side. Now the line drawing, I, I don't know if you can see it in this, but that line drawing, there's a dot for the thumb. And I go around the thumb and across the bottom of the pot. Now I'm leaving this area here open because we're going to put a dry brushed highlight in there. Now to shade that tree, you're going to take plantation pine and you're going to shade up underneath like this. This is where you get to fix up a few little bobbles and wobbles. I'm late. <laughs> <laughs> Who's late? <laughs> uh, Kathy Pittman. Hi, Kathy. Better late than never, lovey. So the plantation pine goes up underneath those boughs like so and I leave that until afterwards because it's an opportunity to fix up little wobbles and bobbles and and sharpen things up a little bit just like that and that shapes our tree quite nicely I know at the top of that tree those shadows sort of get lost a little bit so you have that opportunity to clean them up like so. Now you can add additional highlights to this tree. You can take that uh, clean brush with a little of that uh, margarita and a touch of warm white into it make it a slightly lighter value and you can add a few little highlights in there. Let me turn this back upside down so you can see how it applies. So this would be the highlight side of our tree, just like on our Santa. So I'm going to use that brightened bit of margarita just to add a few little highlights here and there. Nothing substantial, just a few little strokes here and there just to brighten it up. And it's applied in the same method that you did the first two little bits of color. So now it's got some texture and it's got some movement and it has some highlights. Where can I buy media paint? Uh, right now, they obviously they are very difficult to get for obvious reasons, but um, MaureenBaker.com, it's uh, www.maureen, M-A-U-R-E-E-N, dash baker.com. Maureen still has a pretty good selection of the, the fluid acrylics on her website. So now it's time for that little dry brush. I'm going to pick up a little of that warm white. should probably clean the red out of my plate blender. Grab my big one then. Okay, so a little bit of warm white. And we'll just brighten that highlight on the forward part of that pot. Like that. And now we're going to add some beads. I have a, a little bit of garland on my tree. And I did that again, just using the, you know, the blunt end of my brush. And I just added little dots of, of white coming off of the, the tree. About every other layer, just to create sort of a, a simple garland on the tree. You could do this with a variety of different colors too. I just chose to use white. You don't have to. You can use whatever color you want. 
just a lot of white going on in that tree. So a few dots just to create that garland. There we go. So now our little tree is going to be cut out. So I can, I can pull all this tape off now. Like so. And I'll give you a tip about pulling off tape. If you're going to pull tape off of a painted piece or something fragile like this paper, um, there, there is a, a way to do that so that you don't rip your paper or pull the paint off of your surface. And that is this. Have it at an angle. And of course it's tearing the paper. Yeah, that's brilliant. Um, <laughs> any other time that would have worked perfectly. Just make sure that you fold the paper back on itself at a 45 degree angle. Just like that. Uh, probably not. There we go. So if you fold it back on itself and take the tape off that way, it just alleviates a lot of the surface tension and helps you avoid pulling all the paint, or in this case, the paper, off of the surface. So, just like that. Ta-da! Okay, so our paint is almost dry. I'm gonna quickly dry this. Ideally, this would be a great time to put a coat of decoupage or matte medium over top of your Christmas tree. And if you wanted to add some glitter, this would be a great time to do it. So now, coming back to our piece here. <laughs> Renee is shaking his head going, no, to never is a good, never is a good time to do glitter. Um, he was rather sparkly after my episode with the glitter the other day, so. So I'm going to quickly cut my tree out. And again, Murphy's Law. Murphy's <laughs> Law. Yep. I'm going to cut out my tree. And I like that I can perfect the shape of my tree with the scissors. And I can cut away any of those lines that I'm not particularly fond of. I don't know. So if you guys have any questions right now, because this is tedious cutting things out. It's <laughs> the reason why I'm not a scrapbooker. Great way to get in the holiday spirit early. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, absolutely. Um, I had mentioned to the kids the other day that, you know, I kind of wanted to know ahead of time what they wanted because... Uh, I'd like to get my Christmas shopping done early this year. Last year, I was so late, it was ridiculous. This year, I'd kind of like to get it all done early. Not glitter, but fairy dust. Fairy dust. That's a great way to... I like that. He can be your elf, then, since he was covered in glitter. <laughs> yes. Somehow don't think he'd appreciate that, but <laughs> you're cutting off camera. I'm cutting off camera. I know. I've just figured that you're not. Uh, you know what I'm doing. I'm cutting paper. <laughs> you know the um, <laughs> when when we were graduating from high school, they they came and asked you a question about what you would like to be doing or what you expected to be doing in ten years, and I I very cheekily told them that you know my my ambition was to be a designer, a graphic designer, or an artist, and that I would more than likely end up doing cutty cutty paste paste at a kindergarten. And then it occurred to me the other day while I was doing this that, oh my God, that's exactly what I'm doing. I'm just not in kindergarten. But I am doing cutty cutty paste paste. So um, I just, I rather chuckled about that because that's what I had thought I would be doing once I. Uh, 10 years down the line. Well, you know, it's a bit more than 10 years since I graduated from high school, so. <laughs> uh, I had to translate this, but they are asking, what kind of paper is it? This is just scrapbook paper, this one. 
Um, but you can use almost anything. I mean, you could use parchment, you could use greeting cards or gift wrap, rice paper. I mean, you're not relegated to using, uh, you know, commercial scrapbook papers. You can use whatever you like. That's why you use glamour dust. Glamour dust. Glamour dust rules. So, there we go. I've got my flower pot cut out. Now I'm going to cut the thumb hole out. There we go. So in case you're wondering, why do I have this horrible feeling my tree's not going to fit in there? Nope. How did I do that? Oh, and now I know. I have the lettering too high. <laughs> Oops. I used the wrong lettering when I traced this on. I used the larger lettering and I should have used the smaller. Oops. Okay, so I'll have to erase my lettering and, and put it on at a later date, but um, I'm going to have to lower him until, there we go. Yeah, I put the, the bigger lettering on. So the, the piece in the pattern is this size. It's huge. And I used the lettering off of the big one to do the small one and it's too big, so. <laughs> So I'm, I'm not going to worry too much about the lettering. We're going to talk about that later anyway. Um, so, so here is when he's all laid out what he looks like. So now we're going to decoupage him onto the surface. And I need to get him wet. So I'm going to dunk him in my water dish. Poor Santa, I drowned him. Morning, Santa. Waterboarding Santa. <laughs> That's how you get what you want for Christmas. Oh my god. <laughs> oh, did you hear that? Oh my I god. <laughs> my son has an evil streak. Um, I gotta, <laughs> I'm going to grab my fugly brush. And I'm using matte medium for this part. I'm going to put a generous coat of matte medium in the area where my Santa is going to be. Just like so. <laughs> well, I'm guessing they heard me because there's a crap ton of slapping faces. <laughs> Just so you know, people, th that is one apple that doesn't fall far, too far from the tree. <laughs> so I have gotten my Santa quite wet. And I'm going to lay him directly. I can make sure I get him in the right spot. I'm going to lay him into that matte medium, like so. So he is quite wet. I'm going to grab a piece of shop towel and pull off some of that excess. Just like that. What have I got there? A little piece of paper. <laughs> yeah. So I've laid him into that matte medium and I'm going to brush a little over top. And you see how instantly he laid nice and flat, even though that paper had a little bit of buckling. The minute it got wet, it laid out just beautifully. Beautiful. He fit very nicely. Yep. And I'm going to do the same thing to the Christmas tree. Uh, if one does not have matte medium, what can be used as a substitute? If you don't have matte medium, you can use decoupage matte. Um, although I work for DecoArt, in a pinch, if you have to, you can always use the matte version of Mod Podge. That will work well too. So, there we go. So I have that in place. And one of the things, one tool that I recommend, if you're going to be doing a lot of this type of thing, one tool that I absolutely encourage you to get your hands on is one of these. This is a brayer. So that when you're doing this, if there's any areas where you're seeing bubbles or ripples or whatnot, you can use this brayer to roll it out so that the paper adheres firmly to the surface. A brayer is a great little tool to have in your paint box for a lot of different reasons, but this is, is one of the, the best. So then I take my matte medium 
and I cover the rest of the surface because I want a nice uniform finish everywhere. Uh, what color is the background? Background is Prussian blue. Prussian. And I have two coats on here. Prussian blue tends to be a little on the transparent side. So if you're finding that it doesn't cover very well, try using a darker blue or mixing a little Prussian with um, some gray, just to give you a little more opacity. And then do your final coat of just straight Prussian blue. There we go. He's on there nice and tight. Perfect. Yeah, I think so too. But I will have to change the lettering size. <laughs> so there it is. That was not a difficult piece. So once this is completely dry, and the nice part about the matte medium and the deck wash is it dries very quickly. I can't wait to waterboard. <laughs> I sometimes wonder why I let him in here. <laughs> was it me? It was Sarah <laughs> yeah, well, Webley. Yeah, well, oh, Sarah, okay. <laughs> okay, okay. Sarah has a wonderfully twisted sense of humor. <laughs> so there it is. I mean, that's as difficult as that piece gets. Um, I am going to talk to you about finishing. So I'm going to pop this finished one into, into the surface. Now, to finish it out, I went around with my the end of my brush and a few dip dots of warm white just to add a few extra small, tiny snowflakes. I also used my, uh, my Uniball Signo, my gel pen, to add a few little stitch lines and details around it, give a sketchy edge. And then I did the brush lettering on my piece. Um, I've done enough brush, blush, blah, 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 blah. English is a second language today. Um, I've done enough brush lettering in videos in the last little while. Um, so if you need a refresher on how I do the lettering, I mean, you can view any one of those. So we won't go into that one today. But I wanted to get into um, how to do this decoupage Santa on this type of surface and then finishing it out. I just spattered it lightly with a little bit of titanium white. You could go in and add some glitter to these swirls. Um, you can have, I know, I'm getting the stink eye from Mr. No, Man over here. So you could go ahead and add some glitter to this or, uh, you know, flashes of gold or whatever you like. Um, I think this is a really pretty piece and I love doing these Santas. There's just so much fun to do and they work up really fast. Okay, I think that that is about it. If you have any questions, guys, don't hesitate to uh, pop them into the, co the comment section. I'm more than happy to answer them. We always review them after the fact anyway, so make sure that you pop your questions in. L leave us a message. Let us know where you're watching from. We love to find out just how far away or how close to home people are. I do have a giveaway for this week. I have a gorgeous set of the Dynasty Faux Squirrel brushes for one of you. So please don't forget to hit a comment. Um, if you're not already subscribed to my YouTube channel, please do so. I would love to have you and uh, we'd like to bring you more and more videos. And uh, that would be of great support and great help to us and we'd appreciate it very much. All right, I think that's it for the day. Thanks so much for coming guys. You know I appreciate it. Mwah. Love ya. Please stay safe. I'll see you again soon. <laughs>